So in this video, we're going to create our very own query. So I'm just going to close this existing query window and I'm going to click up here on new query. So this gives me a completely blank window. Now, a word of warning, there is more than one database or there are more than one database in my particular instance. And it's not just the database as you can see, there are also four visible system databases. There's also a hidden one as well. How does a computer know that I want to query a table in the my first database database as opposed to say the master database and the answer lies up here this shows which database this particular query window is currently using now make sure you have the right database that you are going to be using if you want to change the database so let's say I'm in the master database and I want to go to the my first database. There's a very simple command called use. So use, and this is when I drag my first database from the object explorer to the query window, it saves a lot of time. And then I press enter or the carry routine, and then I go, go. If I execute this, that changes my database to my first database. So that's just a tip, make sure you're in the right database. So I can keep this or I can get rid of it and continue. So what I want to do, first of all, is I want to retrieve the information that I've just added into the transactions table. Now I do this by writing a select statement. But first of all, let's just have a look at the computer and see what's actually happening. Is SQL Server running? The answer is yes, but in the background. The foreground, this SQL Server Management Studio, isn't actually doing anything. Pieces of code that you write, you can write as many pieces of code as you want, but they'll only run when you click on Execute or press F5. So, Select, what is the select statement? Well, in other programming languages, we would use the word print. So that's essentially what select does. It prints not to pieces of paper, but it prints down here to this place where we've currently got the tab messages because we've just executed this use command. Now the select statement is built up of six main clauses. Select from where group by having and order by. And we'll be looking at each of these in turn. So select statement is built up of clauses. So we're going to start off with the select clause, which is an essential part of the select statement. Now, I don't actually have to be querying databases to begin with. I could just say select one plus one. So imagine this programming language where I use the word print. So print one plus one. I click execute. And there we have our answer two. And let's have a look at the messages that came up. One row affected. So the word affected means it's either been printed out in a tab down here or it's been stored internally. It doesn't actually mean that there is any modification to the data. Now note that it has a column name of no column name and that's because we've not given it a column name. So to give it a column name, what I'm going to do is type the word as and then give it a column name like result. So if I execute this, you can see that we've now got the word result as the column name. If I want additional columns, I then put in a comma and then the new second column. So three plus three, result two. Now you may have noticed I haven't put in the word as now, the word as in SQL Server 
version of TSQL, the code language that we're using, is optional. You don't use it. You don't actually need it. But for me, I do use it because it makes the resulting code so much clearer. So I use as every time, but it's down to you. You can use whichever you wish. So I'll execute this. And there we go. We can now see we've got two columns. So I'm going to add even more code. I'm going to say 4 plus 4 as result 3. And execute this. And we have a third. Oh, we don't have a third column. What's the message? Incorrect syntax near 3. And you can also see a little red squiggly underline. The computer is saying, um, I have no idea what you're talking about. And the reason for this is the computer does not like spaces being put into column names unless they are surrounded by hard brackets. So here is the result with the hard brackets around and I've just pressed F5 to execute. Now another thing you can do is add in carriage returns. So this is a perfectly valid result, a perfectly valid select statement. So I can execute that and get the same result. I mean, you can go to some extreme if you want. Again, this perfectly valid. You could have a carriage return before the comma as well. And in fact, in more advanced SQL server code, there is some nice reason why having carriage returns before commas so like this is actually advantageous to you. So this might look odd, but later on in more advanced code, that is actually a useful technique. Now I talked about this being Microsoft's version. Now Microsoft's version of SQL is not the only SQL that's available. There are others like Oracle SQL and that's quite a major competitor, in fact. Now, why do I bring this up at this stage? Well, firstly, this code would not work in Oracle SQL. And the reason for that is in Microsoft's version, the select clause is the only one that's mandatory. It's the only clause in the select statement that you absolutely need. In Oracle, version of SQL, you do need the next clause, a from clause. Second, a lot of the Oracle variants require words like select to be in capital letters. Now you can have it in capital letters if you want, or you can have it in lowercase, or you could have it in a variety, it's entirely down to you. And thirdly, Oracle's version requires, to a large extent, semicolons at the end of sentences, at the end of statements. So the select statement is a statement made of a select clause, a from clause, and others. It's only at the end, when you've reached the end of the sentence, the statement, that you would then need the semicolon. Here in Microsoft's version, the semicolon is optional. There are only a very few limited instances where it is actually needed. Again, that's quite advanced. Now, here's the code. And let's say I wanted to copy this code to Microsoft Excel. Well, I can do this by clicking on this top left hand button. And I could just copy, control and C. And if I copy and paste into Excel, then I get the data. If I wanted the headers, then instead of just clicking on there, I'll right and click on there and go copy with headers. And now I've got the headers as well. And usually that's the one I need to use. So this is the select clause. The select clause is the equivalent of print. Now you'll notice that in this video, we've not actually retrieved any of the rows from the transactions table. That's because to do that, we need one more clause, the from clause, which we'll have a look at in the next video.